because I hope that sometimes it will help people reflect on their own lives, so please bear with me. I wanted to be a lawyer since I was a teenager. In my first year of college, I wrote a paper on the Guinea decision. In that decision, the U.S. Supreme Court said that generally under the Sixth Amendment, indigent criminal defendants have the right to court appointed counsel. And that's a great decision, and it's worthy of admiration. But the decision itself did not impress me as much as what brought it about. Because the miracle of our legal system is that great changes can be brought from very humble, even ordinary circumstances. In that case, Mr. Gideon was an indigent who was charged with breaking into a pool room. He asked the court to appoint an attorney for him, and the judge refused. Mr. Gideon said, and I quote, the United States Supreme Court says I am entitled to be represented by counsel. That was it. That's all it took. I was 17 when I read how Gideon's attorney, Abe Ford, is prepared for his argument before the Supreme Court. And as I was reading, I became excited. I was reading about a legal hero making things happen. And I wanted to make things happen. I wanted to be a lawyer. As Western State exposed me to great moments in the law, gave me the opportunity to work with judges and attorneys, I began to identify with President Taft when he said, I love judges and I love courts. They are my ideals that typify on earth what we shall meet hereafter in heaven under a just God. Practicing law is also very rewarding. To quote a very well-known American judge, Lawyers are given a place of privilege in this society. They are allowed to toil in the majestic edifice of law. This provides them with dignity. You were right the first time. Because there are people waiting for you that you haven't ever even met. And only you will do because through your insight, through your experience, there are causes that only you can advocate. There are issues and facts that only you can successfully argue. Out there, there are defendants that need your help. There are communities that need justice. And there are victims that need a voice. But if you turn your back on your ideals, on your conscience, you won't be there when tragedy strikes. You won't be there to ensure justice is done. And instead, injustice will be done. And that injustice will chip away at this profession that we hope to enter. It will chip away at this county we hope to prosper in. Because as Dr. Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Be